Hi boys and girls, welcome back. For the next three lessons, I'm going to be uh, teaching you about the solar system. And today, we're going to be talking about the moon and earth orbits. But before we begin our solar system uh, mini unit, let's talk about some fast facts. The sun is about 93 million miles from earth. It would take you about 193 years to travel that distance in a car at highway speed. About 500,000 craters can be seen on the moon through telescopes on Earth. And this is my travel telescope, it's portable. We take it on our camping trips. Uh, so there's affordable telescopes out there, and then there's telescopes that cost a real lot of money. But it would take 400 hours to count all those craters on the moon. Earth has seasons because it's tilted on its axis but Uranus is tilted so far that it's on its side, which means in, on Uranus there's winter for 21 years. They never have summer. Stop. Quick clip. Okay, before we talk about the moon and Earth's orbits, let's talk about a few vocabulary words that you'll, you'll need to know what they are. So. Uh, when I'm talking about my information, we won't have to stop and talk about them. The first one is satellite. A satellite is an object that moves around another object in space. Okay. Another one is orbit. An or orbit is the moon moves around the Earth in this kind of a path, an orbit. Then we have phases. The moon cycle, which takes 28 days to complete, and these are called phases. We also have, we'll talk about revolution. The movement of Earth around the sun is called revolution. Then we talk, I already talked about the axis. That's the imaginary line that runs through Earth from the North Pole through the South Pole. And the last one we'll be talking about is rotation. It takes 24 hours for Earth to complete this on its axis. It's rotation. Okay. The moon is a natural satellite of Earth. It's an object that moves around another object in space. The moon moves around Earth in a certain path or orbit. It takes about 28 days for the moon to complete its orbit. The moon is smaller than Earth, but Earth is smaller than the sun. The moon's light comes from a reflection of the sunlight. Half the moon faces the sun, so as it moves through its orbit, a different amount of its lit half can be seen by Earth. That's why the moon seems to have different shapes or phases. Okay, what are the phases of the moon? During the first half of the month, days 1 through 14, the amount of light from the moon decreases or gets smaller. During the last half of the month, days 15 to 28, the amount of light from the moon increases or you can see more. As the moon moves around Earth, Earth moves around the sun. So that's happening the whole time. The Earth is moving, moves Earth, moving around Earth while the Earth is moving around the Sun. It takes one year or 365 days for Earth to complete a revolution around the Sun. As Earth revolves around the Sun, it's also spinning around an imaginary line or axis which runs through the center of Earth from the North Pole to the South Pole. It takes 24 hours to complete one rotation on its axis. This is what causes day and night. The Earth and its seasons. The Earth's axis is slightly tilted. This tilt, along with constant movement of Earth around the Sun, causes the seasons, fall, winter, spring, and summer. Around September 22nd or 23rd every year, all places on Earth have equal amounts of day and night. That's why we have in the Northern Hemisphere, we have fall, and in the Southern Hemisphere, like Australia, they have spring. Around December 21st or 22nd, the Northern Hemisphere has fewer hours of daylight, so it's winter there, and the Southern Hemisphere has their longest day of summer, once again in Australia. Around March 20th or 21st is coming up. All places on Earth have equal hours of daylight and dark. It's spring here in the Northern Hemisphere and fall in the Southern Hemisphere. And then the last time in June 21st or 22nd, the northern hemisphere turns towards the sun, causing more hours of daylight, so it's summer here. And its southern hemisphere, or Australia, has the shortest day, so it's winter there. Stop. Okay. Okay, so I did that. 
Okay, I'm going to do a, an experiment or an activity to show how the sun lights the moon and the arrows point to the face of the moon. Uh, someone on earth would see at night. For this we'll need um, eight Oreo sandwich cookies. Now if you, you can buy other kinds of sandwich cookies, but they have to be chocolate with a white inside, white frosting. And we'll need some white glue, a piece of black construction paper, and a plastic knife, and the paper that comes in the packet, if you don't have the packet, you can get on by um, letting me know on my email, sciencegranny50, okay, at gmail. This piece of paper uh, shows the phases of the moon, and then it also gives you uh, cutouts that I cut out so I wouldn't have to uh, write it if you want. You can use white chalk and write, write the, which phase it is on the black paper. All right? Once you've done that, you cut those out and put those on your black paper, you'll get eight, um, pretty much sp spaced evenly, sections. And I put, I glued mine onto cardboard to make it a little bit stronger. And you're going to have the eight phases of the moon. Uh, let me see where it starts. Right here is your last quarter. And then it goes to your uh, waning gibbous. And then here's the full moon. And then from that point on, it gets smaller and smaller as it goes around. And each one is called a different phase until you have your new moon, which in the sky, you won't be able to see it. It's going to look pretty much like, you know, nothing like the sky. I just put a, a round circle to indicate the, the sun, how the reflection's happening on the sun. It's a lot of fun, and you, you'll probably break some cookies, so then you just have to eat them. What can you do? All right, so I used the plastic knife to scrape away the white frosting to get the shapes for the different moons, and I didn't really get it all off. So you can take your time doing that. You wouldn't want to eat these though. Please don't eat these cookies. You have glue on there. It's going to taste creepy. All right. That's kind of an interesting little show and tell kind of thing to show that you know the phases of the moon. Okay. So that's that. Okay. Another activity that I've chosen to go along with this lesson is talking about how you can make an instrument to tell time from the sun. And that's called a sundial. What you'll need is a piece of uh, black paper and a piece of cardboard about this size, 15 by 20 centimeters or so, a golf pencil or a small pencil, take off the eraser, and then a pencil compass, okay? You'll need a pen or a pencil to measure with or to write with, and then some, uh, some kind of clay. It could be Play-Doh, it could be modeling clay, whatever you want to use. Just leave a little bit of it. All right, so the first thing you do is you use a little lump of clay, take this out, and kind of spread it around, and then put it as close to the middle of the cardboard as you can. And then I kind of chunked it down, and you put a little hole in there, so you can put the bottom of the pencil into the hole and make sure that the top, the pointed part, stands up. I glued it down so it would stay longer. Okay, and then you need to measure the pencil, the amount of pencil that's stick, sticking up. Mine was three inches. And then we go with the, the compass. You go from the pencil out till you've got three inches. And then put, take the pencil out, use the, I don't forget which one, Use the side that's writing, I think this is the side, and stick the other side inside, and oh, I guess I got it backwards. Okay, so the part that can write, the pencil part, you'll go around halfway, so you're making a half circle. Let me show you how that looks when you're done. So you've made a half circle, that's three inches of a radius around your uh, lump of clay. And then you'll put your pencil back in, in the little hole and stand it up there as straight as you can. Now, what you're going to do with this, I guess we didn't need the black paper, what you'll do once you have your sundial completed is you're going to put it on a windowsill that gets sun all day, or you could put it outside, and then each hour you'll trace the shadow of the pencil on the cardboard. For instance, if it's right here, you'll, if it's 
the shadow is right here, then you'll write what time of day if that was one o'clock. And then you'll put another shadow an hour later at two o'clock, three o'clock, and so forth. And then you'll do that for six hours. And the next sunny day, use your sundial to tell time. So you're gonna know what time, when the shadow is at what point, if it's gonna be one o'clock or three o'clock or whatever for six hours. All right, and it looks like this, like this. I used um, just cardboard from a box, just easy. All right, so how does your sundial use the Earth's movement to tell time? Remember that the Earth is constantly moving. If it wasn't, then a sundial wouldn't work to tell time. I hope that this works out for you because it's a lot of fun to use. Um, some people pay a lot of money for special fancy sundials. Yours won't be quite as fancy, but it'll work the same. Okay, so today we talked about the moon and Earth's orbits. Um, to summarize, the moon seems to change shape as it moves around the Earth. These phases of the moon are caused by differences in the amount of light and surface visible from Earth. As the moon orbits Earth, Earth is spinning on an imaginary axis. So the moon is going around Earth and Earth is spinning at the same time. It takes one day for Earth to complete that rotation. As Earth rotates, it also revolves around the sun. It takes one year for the Earth to complete a revolution. During this time, some parts of Earth are tilted towards the sun and some parts are turned away. As a result, different locations on Earth receive different amounts of direct sunlight. This causes the seasons. Okay, reviewing questions. Number one, why would you classify the moon and Earth as satellites? Do you remember what a satellite is? An object orbiting around another object. And they both are doing that the moon around the earth and the earth around the sun. Number two, what are two ways that earth moves? If you say, or you're thinking, revolves around the sun and rotating on an imaginary axis, then you'd be correct. Number three, what causes the season? It's the earth's revolution around the sun. And the last one, number four, what season would a town in the southern hemisphere for instance, Sydney, Australia, have during winter. A, excuse me, during January. A, winter, B, spring, C, summer, or D, fall. And that would be C, summer. They're the opposite of us. Okay, now, um, toward the end of every lesson, I always share with you a few of the pages that I, uh, puzzles and things that I get for you to do that it has something to do with the lesson we did. And using today's vocabulary words, I created um, a crossword for you. And as usual, I put the answers with it too, but try to do your crossword without the answers and see if you can remember. Let's put it all together. So we talked about the moon and the Earth's orbits today to start our solar system mini unit. Now, if, there's, if you don't have the whole packet, which would be very hard to do all these experiments without it, unless you keep watching me a million times, um, do get on your Gmail, sciencegranny50 at gmail, and request a packet, and I will send it to you, or I'll send it to you through um, email, and you can download it. You can also download it through YouTube. Um, if you get on the description um, of the lesson, it, it has a, uh, attachments there, and you can download them on your own. You don't even have to send me an email. But I do appreciate comments and remarks and, you know, anything constructive, uh, or any suggestions. All right, that's all we have for today. So I'll see you next week for the second lesson about the solar system. Don't forget to be awesome. Bye.